I'd like to speak today about the nomination of Mustafa Kasabai to be the district judge for the District of Oregon. We've seen some bad nominees from this administration, quite a few in fact. There have been a few that have been reasonable and qualified. When those come up, I've voted in favor of them. That includes some judicial nominees from states where both senators are Democrats, believe it or not. Mr. Kasabai is not one of those reasonable nominees. He's not even one of the run-of-the-mill crazy left-wing nominees. He is uniquely unqualified to be a federal judge. First, as several others have mentioned, Mr. Kasabai wrote a law review article claiming that, quote, most intercourse is rape, end quote, and that, quote, heterosexual relations per se are infused with violence and control, end quote. If he were confirmed, I wonder whether someone accused of rape or any other sex crime, falsely or otherwise, would feel he or she could ever get a fair hearing in Mr. Kasabai's courtroom. Doesn't seem that Mr. Kasabai would actually care all that much whether someone being tried in his courtroom for a crime was guilty in any case. In a 2021 interview for the Oregon State Bar, Again, 2021, not some youthful indiscretion 40 years ago. Mr. Kasabai said, quote, we have to set aside conventional ideas of proof when we are dealing with the interpersonal work of equity, diverse, diversity, and inclusion. We have to set aside conventional ideas of proof. I want to be clear. He was talking specifically about how he views truth in the courtroom. In that same interview, he goes on to say, quote, as a judge, I can appreciate the challenge of employing a different mode of understanding truth than that which most lawyers are accustomed to in our work, end quote, as a judge. Not as a human being, not as a father, not as a neighbor, but as a judge. A different mode for understanding truth than that which most of our lawyers are accustomed to in our work, like, say, the rules of evidence. As amazing as that statement is, it begs a question. If he feels that way about the modern racism and bigotry of the cultural Marxism labeled diversity, equity, and inclusion, what are the other areas where Mr. Kasabai doesn't like being bothered with pesky things like conventional ideas of proof. We could go on for hours about the problems with Mr. Kasabai's nomination, but I'll keep it brief because unfortunately I suspect my Democratic colleagues in this room are prepared to rubber stamp this grossly unqualified nominee. But there's one additional issue I would like to raise. I think most of you are familiar with the work of a left-wing grifter and charlatan who calls himself Ibram X. Kendi. Riding the wave of the BLM riots in 2020, Mr. Kendi, whose real name, by the way, is Ibram Henry Rogers, wrote a book on so-called anti-racism, which argues in line with other critical race theory texts for the destruction of Western civilization, capitalism, and our legal and political systems. According to Ibram Henry Rogers, America is fundamentally racist to its core. While the left was salivating over this new set of fancy labels for cultural Marxism, Ibram Henry Rogers was raking in tens of thousands of dollars per appearance to spend just a few minutes on Zoom calls telling companies and nonprofits that they should all feel guilty because deep down they're racist, put out a kid's book called The Anti-Racist Baby, trying to indoctrinate toddlers and kids to believe that they too are racist and everything around them is racist and their country is racist and it should all be torn down. Boston University even brought him on to create something called the Center for Anti-Racist Research which received some $30 million 
as the university canceled all classes for a day to praise their new anti-racist leader as a saint in the pantheon of the left. They also took several silly political positions, such as by claiming that voter identification laws are, quote, <clears throat> an expressly anti-black form of state violence, end quote. But within a few years, it's all come crashing down with half of the staff of the Boston University Center fired and the rest transitioned to something called the fellowship model. Nobody's quite sure what happened to the millions of dollars that Abraham Henry Rogers received. It turns out that touting absurd ideas about race is, I guess, a lot easier than generating rigorous research to back it up. Maybe Senator Durbin could use his subpoena power to subpoena Boston University and Abram Henry Rogers to investigate and expose this fraud. But coming back to Mr. Cassabai, he's a big fan of Abram Henry Rogers, calling him, quote, an amazing historian. But he does have one complaint. He doesn't think it goes far enough. Mr. Cassabai himself said he would, quote, like to push some of Ibram's ideas a bit further. I don't know how much further one can push a radical ideology like this, but I do know that anyone who subscribes to it and anyone who wants to push it even further should not have a lifetime appointment on the federal courts to try. <laughs>